Hi everybody, so we're looking at big topic areas. Topic areas where you should give an extra 5-10% for your paper 2 mainly. Uh, we're looking at macroeconomic big topic areas. Now make sure guys that you essay plan from all of these topic areas. Uh, and also make sure that you've got excellent application. If you need to go and research a bit more and get some good nuggets to help you uh, with these topic areas, then make sure you do that as well. And bear in mind also, I've got theory videos, content videos that will cover everything I'm gonna mention here. So if you want to go and just make sure you're solid with the knowledge and the theory, it's very easy to do so using the channel. So here we go then. Let's start by talking about macro policy. In micro, I said there were two major topic areas where you should really devote more time, maybe specialize in market failure and market structures. Well, for macro, it's macro policy. We know macroeconomics is all about trying to hit the macro objectives all at the same time. Macro policy is the way in which we can fine tune the economy to get to those macro objectives. An examiner's favorite at the heart of macro, you should certainly specialize in this area. Be prepared for pretty much a guaranteed question from this topic area. We look at monetary policy. Monetary policy is very interesting at the moment because we can look at it in both ways. In August 2016, something very interesting happened in the UK. Interest rates were cut and there was an extra boost of quantitative easing. That could well be a question that comes up in your examination. Um, now, I already know that this question has come up, I think, in a couple of examples for the AS examination, right? In which case, it's probably not likely to feature for paper two this year. But if it didn't feature at all in your AS exam board macro question, then it could well do, yeah? So discussing the impact of lower interest rates or a cut in rates and a slight boost of quantitative easing to stimulate growth post the Brexit vote, yeah? So in that context, be prepared. But if this question did feature in an AS examination this year, then the other way around, discussing the need for higher interest rates, the context of the UK could well be, but also looking at how the US and Canada have already been raising rates, normalizing rates, so looking at arguments for and against that, the need for higher interest rates. That's kind of a good monetary policy topic area. If we look at fiscal policy, there is one topic area within fiscal policy that really is topical, that really does stand out, and that is again austerity policy, you know? We're in our eighth year of austerity policy in the UK. So again, a very common exam question is discussing the need for it, discussing the impact of it. So austerity policies, um, very much make sure you're aware of them. Make sure you've got good application of what's happened in the UK economy since we've had austerity, okay? Be prepared for something along those lines too. And then we have supply side policies. Now I don't feel like you're gonna get a generic supply side policy question like you know, supply side policies to reduce unemployment, supply side policies to reduce inflation, or whatever, right? I don't think it's gonna be generic like that. Again, a few examples have already asked supply side policies in the AS uh, macro paper. So that's, a, that's more like an AS style question. I don't think it's gonna be like that if it does feature this year. You guys should make sure you revise supply side policies for something more technical. So supply side policies to reduce the natural rate of unemployment. Now there was an exam board that asked this last year, so then it's not likely for you. But if it hasn't been touched, then that's interesting because we know there are many countries now who are pretty much at the natural rate. The UK is one example of that. So discussing supply side policies to reduce the natural rate, yeah. Discussing supply side policies to boost productivity. We all know in the UK how productivity is a real concern very poor productivity since the financial crisis. So maybe looking at reasons why, okay, but then policies to deal with it, and they will be supply side policies to deal with it. So looking at supply side policies in that context, but also supply side policies to boost international competitiveness, yeah, the competitiveness of the UK economy. That is productivity linked, but you can see slightly different uh, context, slightly different wording here. So being prepared for a question that's a little bit more open on supply side policies to boost international competitiveness. The next topic area is discussing the impacts of the weak pound on the UK economy. Now we know that the pound took a really big hit after the Brexit vote and also last year after the shock election result. Um, so maybe a 25 marker coming discussing the impacts of the weak pound. Now who knows how it could feature? It could be on macro performance, it could be isolating one or two of the macro objectives here. Um, it could be just on the current account, I don't know, but something on the weak pound. Um, certainly you should have context about that very interesting case study generally to, to go into and, and research. Um, so just give an extra chunk of time towards the weak pound, a very important topic area there. Globalization is a big deal and it's a big examiner's favorite. A lot of examples did not touch this last year at all. So being prepared for questions on globalization, but beware because questions on globalization are never just 
the same, the same, the same. They could go in so many different directions. So just discussing the impact of globalization on a developed country, maybe the UK, discussing the impact of globalization on developing countries, they might give you a country, um, discussing a comparison, yeah? So discussing whether developing countries have benefited more or less than developed countries, discussing globalization and whether it's necessarily increased income inequality. There are so many ways we can go with globalization, but be prepared for it. It's a big topic area, often kind of left to the side when students are revising here, but a lot of the examples didn't touch it at all last year, so just be prepared for something on globalization. The balance of payments, not for certain examples. I would strip out AQA from this here, but um, at Excel in particular, really, uh, potentially OCR as well. The balance of payments didn't really feature at all uh, last year for you guys. So being prepared for questions on the balance of payments. We're looking at the current account, obviously, as a key focus. So discussing the significance of large current account deficit in the UK, discussing policies to reduce current account deficit. Uh, if you're non-AQA, I would certainly give an extra chunk of time towards the balance of payments. Development economics is a seriously big deal. It's a big part of the course, all right? And there are certain examples that love it. OCR, NXL, your exam boards love development. And for AQA, it's brand new as well. So you never know, AQA, they asked a big question about it last year. They might want to do it again just to show that, yeah, we are also big on development. But you should definitely not under-revise development. There are so many potential long essay questions that can feature from development. Um, a trade versus aid question could well be it this year. Um, if not, the common, common development questions are discussing market-based policies for development, discussing interventionist policies for development, discussing growth and development. Yeah, they're the, they're the real common ones, but trade versus aid or just a trade question or just an aid question is probably the one I put at the top of the list here. Just do not under-revise development. It's a really interesting part of the course. It's really enjoyable. And you know what? Answering questions on development is not difficult, it's quite simple. So um, yeah, I would, you know, really go for it with development. Be happy if a question comes up and why not go for it? Uh, could be a big scoring area for you here. So many of you have messaged me and have asked about Brexit, you know, and have said, look, is Brexit really likely to come up in the exam? Honestly, I don't think so. And not Brexit like on its own, not like the pros and cons of Brexit or the implications of Brexit. And the reason I don't think so is because it's so uncertain. Our own politicians don't have a clue. There's so much debate over so many major details of Brexit still. So for you guys to get a big 25 marker about the implications of Brexit or the pros and cons of Brexit, I think would be very harsh uh, because of how uncertain it is. And how on earth would you make a judgment about something where we don't really know what the outcomes are yet? Uh, we don't even know what's been negotiated or what might be negotiated still. So I don't think so, but still you should be prepared for it. The basic pros and cons, the theoretical pros and cons, of course exist. So don't just knock it to the side. It's so topical that you want to know something about it, that's for sure. What I think is more likely is for a question to come around the topic area of Brexit, so not directly to do with Brexit and the implications of it, but something around the topic area of Brexit. And one thing that does stand out is discussing the pros and cons of trade deals, negotiating trade deals. Is that in the interest of the UK? Discuss the pros and cons. Because uh, we know that so many important Brexit people, David Davis, Liam Fox, etc., have talked about how we want to be a free trade economy once we do leave the European Union and how we want to negotiate trade deals with many countries, including the EU, but of course many countries outside the EU as well. So um, discussing the pros and cons of trade deals for the UK economy could be something more novel. It is Brexit related, but it's not directly Brexit, if you know what I mean here. And I think that's a more likely way of them integrating Brexit into an exam paper without having to discuss the implications of Brexit, which nobody really knows yet. The last topic area I want to mention is financial markets, and in particular, financial market regulation. Now, I know that's going to be a very unpopular thing to hear. I know a few of you probably that's the last thing you wanted me to say, but you can't just chuck it to the side financial markets. It's another brand new area of the course. All examples last year left it out as any kind of essay question. Um, the last thing I want to say is just to leave it. No, 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 no. You've got to be safe and secure. Who knows, right? They have to ask a question on it sometime. Maybe this is the year. So I would just be prepared. Financial market regulation, that topic area. So discussing the need of it, uh, especially to reduce systemic risk. Discussing the role of bank bailouts, whether that was necessary. Discussing the importance of uh, controls or limits on lending as well to reduce the chance of bank failure. Financial market regulation. And again, if you watch my... 
uh, topic uh, content videos here on the channel, my financial markets playlist videos, you'll be absolutely fine. You'll see that the content is not difficult, but do not just ignore financial markets. Uh, don't take that risk. It's not necessary. It's an enjoyable part of the course. This could be the area where it comes up. So just make sure you revise it, okay? So, as I said at the start, guys, give an extra 5-10% towards these topic areas, essay plan all these areas, make sure you've got good application nuggets. If you need to make sure your content is solid, there are videos covering all of this stuff on the channel. Go and watch that, make sure your theory is very sound. And then do some deeper research if you need to, to get some excellent application to help you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Really hope this video helps. I'll see you all next time.